rock, rock. Draft a quarterback, you know that's good to throw my dots down. The right way, I can put a team's lights out. Scoring one play, all because he ran the right route. A good kicker get your six on the field goal. I like to draft, but on the way, that's a real goal. PPL is like a game of chess. You need to think ahead to have a chance to be the best, and that is facts. It's a war between the alpha and omega. And omega. More intense than street fighter on the same. On the same team is weak, it's time to make a couple trades. Get a player off the waiver just to plug him in and play. Do whatever that it takes so you can win it Make it to the ship so you can say that you were in it If you don't win it then it means you're number two And number two ain't number one so number two ain't good enough Just means you couldn't get it done You had a run but couldn't finish So when next year comes I hope you're doing something different Plan to make it to the top you need to build right Make a trade to win the game as if it feels right 25 is here the new year starts draft night Hope that you're ready for the fight like Friday night lights Keep the enemy in sight try to beat them like you might get yeah, Fantasy is back and PPL is where it's at And here we are, week eight, PPL Live, last week of interconference warfare. The season is flying by. It's always flying by when we're having a good time. But before we jump into week eight, let's take a look back at our week seven scores. Starting with Appease the Gods, getting the five straight, getting it done, 139 to the Argonauts, 128. The Gaff gets a big win. The defending chaps look good, 127 to Trey Fitties, 116. The United Players, the Destroyers, get it done, 130 to 110. Patty's Twins win the prestige matchup of the week, 114 to only for the bosses, Putrid, 75. And the Skulls leave no doubt, just barely, against squad underestimated, 139, 92 to 109. Alrighty, this is great week of PPL action, but before we jump into our week eight games, you know we gotta go into our good, our bad, and our ugly. Good, bad, and ugly, man. Week eight was action packed, a lot of good scoring. Uh, most of the matchups were pretty competitive, man. What did you think? Uh, what's your good, bad, and ugly? Well, uh, I mean, I gotta start it, and uh, I gotta go with uh, the leave no doubt performance. Um, the skulls, uh, leaving no doubt, getting it, getting it at the at the end with Dobbins. Um, I just really liked what I saw. Josh Allen really bouncing back in a big way. They started slow, but he really put it on. And what I like to see out of this week is, you know, his some of his core guys struggled. Struggled. Yeah. Uh, Ramondre Dobbins didn't have a great game. I mean, Jamar Chase being the number one wide receiver, fifteen, it's it's good, but yeah. you 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 would even expect more. Zay Flowers, but whenever. Like Najoku having the day, Aaron Jones, this Rams D, 17 out of your kicker and getting the coach win. I just loved how solid it was that down uh down uh his roster yeah um and so i just think he had an excellent week uh led an omega sweep um and holds uh number one position in a in a very competitive division skulls didn't do nothing wrong in week seven definitely man definitely let's hear your bat is, uh, I'm gonna have to get in my guy, man. Kev, uh, TNT, man. Okay. He's been uh, one one of the teams I've really liked watching so far this year, and yeah. I think this was probably the first instance of him getting cute. Okay. Uh, what I mean there is when when I look at this this roster, I mean again. He went out, got Mark Andrews. We saw uh, him him come alive uh, kind of week six. Yeah. First game, he really got involved. I think at that point, I'd be going there. He didn't, and uh, he missed out on some points. But again, we, we talked about this in our in our matchup last week. I thought he was going to need to to get a, a head coach win to be competitive. Right. And, I mean, he just really wasn't. And so uh, helped the UP really, really keep pace with the rest of the division. Kev, man, in a, in a tough alpha division, man, this is a game that you really could have won and, and put yourself in good good position. You'd be buying for the title. Yeah, definitely, uh, man. At the top right now. Yeah, and it sucks that uh, Mike Evans went out of that uh, Baltimore game a little exactly. early, too. Uh, and I see you're ugly. Yeah, ugly, man. Other side of the Skull Squad matchup. I mean, Squad was playing Skulls. Uh, really? Squad is your ugly, division. man? Yeah, I mean, Squad's my ugly. I mean, he came into this matchup, and, and it just really 
wasn't competitive uh, from go. I mean, CJ, I mean, these guys lost a close matchup, but, I mean, just not effective. Saquon did great, but, I mean, Alvin Kamara, as of late, has not been uh, – same with Tyreek Hill. Again, that's the two injury and Stefan, right? Like, they just didn't have great weeks, but those are all handcuffs. He can do nothing about that. Right. He can upgrade at the CJ Stroud position. I just think that there are better options. And, again, continuing to go there, uh, I think, is going to be – problematic what what bothers me more about this and why i really want to give this ugly is i just have i've been knocking him all season tony pollard i mean again he's 20 22nd when you look at the stats yeah. I mean, which is not terrible but again brian thomas jr has really come on as the number one out of jacksonville so you could go there or it's like you you use some juice to go get kareem hood um, once he gets back in KC and you don't start him either. So I just think that there was some mismanagement going on this week. I mean, even with your 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 defense getting fifteen, your kicker getting twelve, and you getting a twenty point coach win, you lost by thirty points. Yeah, yeah. So it was just an ugly week for squad. He's got to get it get right uh, if he wants to hold on to this. But he's a loser of two straight uh, in a, in a division that um, he could really be and should be gapping out right now. No, definitely, man, definitely. Got to agree with you there. Uh, squad uh, definitely needs to get those wins together, but they still remain in first place in the Alpha Conference, man. Um, my good um, is a team that I thought looked really, really, really strong uh, in a matchup that they needed to get, and um, that's Patty's Twins. Uh, I know it was only 114, but they got uh, consistent scoring from all over the place. Uh, Malik Neighbors getting back into that lineup only had six, but it was still a welcome sight. Um, Brock Purdy had 17 off of those two rushing touchdowns, and Najee Harris uh, really closed it out for the Twins with a strong, strong performance. Um, they're going to need this down the stretch if they're going to have any chance of keeping pace, which they were able to do this week in the uh, Omega Conference. Uh, but it was a good win for the Twins, and they got to keep uh, that going. Uh, my bad man is, is going to be my boy Trey Fitty. Um, and the reason it's bad is because they, they lost uh, Jaden Daniels. Uh, he's only He only got five points before he had to leave that game with an injury. Uh, obviously, you look at um, Brees Hall giving them a huge matchup. That's great. But uh, let's talk about it. Deontay Johnson, only 2.2. Um, really didn't get much from uh, Garrett Wilson. I mean, he, dropped, he let a couple of balls go through his hands. Um, and it just ended up leading to a bad week. Uh, for our guy Trey Fitty, a, a team that I really expected big things from. No Jaden Daniels this week, so it, it just wasn't uh, a good week uh, for them at all. And my ugly is uh, a team that was at one point the most feared team at scoring, and now they just can't find points, and that's only for the boss. Debo uh, exiting that game with an illness early killed some of that scoring potential. But let's talk about it, man. Devonta Smith, one catch for negative two yards in a game that the Giants, or excuse me, the Eagles win by 25 points. Patrick Mahomes is starting to look very pedestrian out there. Only 154 yards passing with a rushing touchdown. And Travis Kelsey is not the terror that he once was. Um, there really isn't much uh, to, to go off the bench with either. Um, and, and scoring is just becoming more and more of a, a, a challenge for only for the boss. And it got really ugly. They were at 69 last week, 75 this week. They've got to figure out a way to get points on the board. But as I always say, what's past this prologue, is still a lot of season left, still a lot of opportunities for teams to get right. And uh, we start in our first matchup with a team that really needs to get right. As we start with, I need about Trey Fitty taking on the Skulls. All right, man, you're good going up against my bad. A big matchup here. Trey Fitty got to get right. Of course, they did lose Jaden Daniels, which isn't a good thing. But, hey, they got Jordan Love. Uh, it's, it's good to have depth. And then, of course, the Skulls come into this matchup with uh, one of the top records in the PPL. What do you think of this one, Trey Fitty Skulls? Yeah, and I think uh, I think Trey Fitty has to get right week. Okay. Um, I think that this is going to be one of the more entertaining matchups. And you know, when I, when we were doing our preseason kind of look at teams, yeah, I expected by this point this should be a prestige matchup. Uh, Trey Fitty has certainly not lived up to expectations.
expectations. Okay. Um, I think this year, uh, this week, though, I think they, they get it done, and I think they get it done behind Jordan Love. Um, we've seen uh, Jacksonville, I mean, has been porous on defense. Definitely. I think Jordan Love and company are playing good ball. I think they're going to go in and get it done. Um, when I look at this this Jets and, and New England game, we've got running backs on both sides. I don't like Ramondre here. Okay. Um, the last time they played the Jets, he ended up with negative figures. Um, I think Brees Hall and company are, are coming on. Um Garrett Wilson, I think, also in that 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 uh, position, and I'm liking where Kyle Pitts is coming along. I mean, Trey Fitty's been patient with this guy, yeah. and uh, he's finally it looks like some coming together. I absolutely love the Steelers D against the the Giants and and Broncos coach against Carolina. Uh, it's it's been confirmed that Young is is coming back, and, okay. and they just didn't look good. I think Broncos number one D, they're going to have a field day. The other side, I think the Skull have some tough matchups. When I see this Josh Allen uh, going to Seattle mm-hmm. uh, with with what that team's been able to do, uh, I just again think that it's it's gonna it's gonna be a tough game for for Josh and company to, to get it done. Okay. Uh, Aaron Jones certainly impressed last week, um, but but again, I'll tell you again when I look at Ramondre, that's that's kind of the question mark for me. Okay. We'll see Zay Flowers. How consistent is that? He's he's going Ravens coach also. Uh, they should certainly win that game, um, but we'll, we'll have to see. I, I think that this is going to be one of the higher scoring matchups. I think that Trey Biddy just ekes this one out. Okay. I think he gets it, though. 128 to the Skulls, 125. All right. Um, I'm going to go the other way, man. I, I, I kind of got to disagree with you on that Seattle-Buffalo uh, game. Seattle, uh, before last week, was giving up pass yards uh, left and right and big passing plays. I'm talking about Brock Purdy. Even De- uh, Daniel Jones had a big passing day against the Seattle defense. So I think Josh Allen could uh, definitely use that matchup uh, to have himself a big game. But I, I do agree with you that uh, Trey Fitty has some pretty intriguing matchups. What I would like to see is uh, because Tua might be playing this week, I'd like to see Jalen Waddle get into that, ma- that lineup, man. He's very explosive, and I think that the Dolphins are going to have a, a, a chance to put some big points up against that Arizona defense. Um, but at the end of the day, I like the Skulls a little bit more. I love Jamar Chase's matchup against Philly. Philly's uh, defense uh, isn't all that great this season. Zay Flowers is starting to get fed week in and week out. As Lamar is ascending as a passer, Zay Flowers is becoming that proxy number one wide receiver. And I love that Detroit defense against Tennessee, and I think that Baltimore head coach gets it done against Cleveland. Now, on Trey Fitty's side, I like his defense. Um... A little bit less. I think that the Giants have room to get some points on that Pittsburgh defense. And Denver against Carolina could be somewhat of a trap. Carolina's going back to Bryce Young could be an unpredictable type of game. Um, At the end of the day, I think that the Skulls have shown the ability uh, to score points. I think they've left no doubt. Uh, Is it the past two weeks in a row? Um, so uh-huh. they, they've, they've really uh, showed the last week of oh, the last week, but I think they had a pretty high scoring total the week before. Also, I uh-huh. like, I like how they're scoring points and I think that they have enough. I got the skulls getting this one, 138 to Trey Fitty's 131. And moving on to our next matchup, we go into a huge one for the Argonauts. A loss here pretty much ends their season. Patty's twins have been able to accomplish this before. We got a big one, a rematch of Pantheon Cup 1 and 8. We got the Argonauts taking on Patty's Twins. All right, man, so it's laid out. Uh, this is a uh, all-timer here. Great matchup here, but uh, the Argonauts have fallen at 1 and 6. Uh, they need a win desperately. Patty's Twins trying to keep pace in that Omega Conference. What do you think of this one? Argo Twins. Yeah, I think that the Argos do get right this week. Um, I think that that one thing that happens has to happen though for that to happen and, and we'll see I mean the twin the twins may or may not do this but I, I certainly think they should consider it I think Brock Purdy should be swapped out for Caleb Williams mm. and I'll tell you why I okay. mean those, those injuries to wide receiver the injury to uh, to to McCaffrey you're already going Jordan Mason and he, he's he's banged up. Yeah, I, I think that that Caleb's just in a much better position against a, a Washington defense without Jaden Daniels, porous defense. I think Caleb Williams can put up better numbers. Okay, she's already 
locked in at Jordan Mason, and I think that that will free her up. I love the matchups, Niners D against Dallas. I love the Lions coach. I mean, uh, Malik Neighbors getting back into the lineup. What's not to like? Right. Um, on the other side, again, Argonauts continue to be able to score regardless of all the stuff that's happened. They just can't get the win. Right. Uh, I think that they get it this week. Uh, he, he, he picked up Tua. We'll see if uh, Tua's ready to go. If not, I don't mind Geno against Buffalo. They certainly have uh, been been porous at times on defense. Right. Um, again, he's got the ability to score everywhere else. I mean, the stat that blows me away is, you know, this guy's record, uh, and he's got the highest point total by almost 100 points, and, again, has – has been scored on the most by about 70 points it's just incredibly rare for this situation to be happening and i just don't think it continues frankly i think that that patty's twins got a lot more question marks they've got a lot of scoring potential but the argonauts have just been proven uh to be top scorers this season and i just think that it comes through I think that uh, this is my lock of the week. Actually, okay. uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Argo. Uh, they're gonna get this one, and I think they're gonna put up some points. One forty-three to mm-hmm. the Twins. One twenty-seven. All right, man. Um, this is a tough one to call, but I think I'm gonna have to go the other way. I actually like the Brock Purdy start um, for Patty's Twins. I think that Dallas is the perfect get-right matchup uh, for San Francisco uh, after that loss. Um, Dallas is coming in and they have not looked good. I mean, really all season long. Uh, two, I think the Cleveland win and the da- and the uh, Pittsburgh win were probably their best wins, and they weren't overly impressive in either of those matchups. Um, although the two of their best games were on the road, so that that might help them out. Um, but I'm with you. Uh, I do like the Tua start. Um, I think that uh, him getting back into that lineup turns that Dolphins offense into one of the more dyna- dynamic offenses in the entire league. And he's going to reap the rewards of that. So the Tua start is a good start. Um, but Najee Harris is starting to come into his own. And that projection is starting to reflect that. The Argonauts cut bait with this guy. May have been a little impatient. Maybe he should have been a keeper over uh, some other guys. Because Najee is really coming into his own now that uh, Mike Tomlin is figuring out how that uh, uh, offense needs to work. Malik Neighbors is another one. Two Monday night players in that matchup could really uh, spell a classic ending for the Twins. On the Argonaut side, they start out strong tomorrow night, man. Jefferson and Cup uh, to open the scoring. Now, a lot of controversy in L.A. with, with Cup being in trade rumors. We don't know how George Kittle's going to look. And that Devontae Adams to George, uh, that Devontae Adams and uh, Aaron Rodgers connection uh, had us uh, dreaming of uh, 2018 Green Bay because it wasn't what it was. At the end of the day, I think the Twins have just enough to get by. Um, and they in, they in the Argonauts season, the Argonauts may be looking at that first pick in the draft. Could you imagine a team that scores this much having that number one pick? But we might be looking at it. I got Patty's Twins getting this one. 129 to the Argonauts, 121. And moving on to our next matchup, we go into a matchup of uh, the top of the top. And a team we pretty much thought was going to be at the bottom of the bottom. But, hey, they're a little bit closer than we could have expected. We got Cavs TNT taking on the gap attack. All right, man, big one here for the defending champs. They got to stay on track. Can't afford to drop this one to Cavs TNT. But Cavs TNT has beaten uh, three original five teams. Why not make it four? What do you think of this one? Cavs TNT and the Gav. Well, I'll tell you what. The Gav ain't going to let that happen is what's going to happen. I think he has a league no-down performance. I think, as I look at the gas squad, I mean, and and we saw it last week. I mean, if I were to give an honorable mention good last week, for Mm -hmm. me, it was the gap. I mean, I thought that at points that Trey Fiddy was going to take that matchup. And when... When, when we saw guys come in, I mean, we were talking about it in the pre-show. When Montgomery went down and Gibbs came in, he went God crazy. sent for, yeah. for the gap. I mean, his guys really have that big hitter potential. He, he put up uh, 127 with a 13-point coach loss. When I look at this week, um, I, I think it's just a continuation. There's, okay. uh, this Philly-Cincinnati game should be a high-scoring affair. Jameer Gibbs should should have another day against Tennessee, especially if Montgomery's not able to give that same load. Yeah. AJ and CD are just, I mean, the, those guys are beasts out there. And when I look at, uh, I like the Packers, D, and 
Vikings, I think, should bounce back even on the road at L.A. Kevin's TNT, though, I mean, again, solid lineup. I mean, they find again, ways to score, going, man. They find ways to get it done. Well, not going to coach is, again, foolish here. Again, he doesn't have the same scoring potential. He needs to go out there and find that coach. Right. But more than anything, what's holding this team back are injuries. I mean, Nico Collins has been out now a few weeks. Mike Evans Ouch, um, yeah. now, too. And, and you look at it, both of those guys are still, with, with missing some time, in the top 15 point rank. When you look at Mooney, Coleman, uh, smith Nijba, uh these guys are just not at the same uh, level as Nico Collins and Mike Evans. So he just doesn't have the same scoring potential right now. Uh-huh. I've got the gaff in a leave no doubt performance mm. going 148 to Kev's TNT's 109. All right, man. Um, I agree with you. I got the gaff in this matchup as well. Jalen Hurts uh, and, uh, and um, AJ Brown. That connection is going to continue to uh, carry the day for the gaff and give them a very, very safe floor. Love that Packers defense as well as that uh, tight end play. Uh, Kraft has been uh, one of the top uh, surprises at the position um, and one of the top surprises in the league. I mean, he's ranked third at the tight end spot. Way for the uh, a great uh, way for the gaff to pull that one, that rabbit out of their hat, um, and it's really helped their scoring potential stay at a high level. Um, on on Kev and T side, man, I love Joe Burrow. Um, he's having an awesome season. He, he's the number three quarterback in the PPL, and I mean, he's really uh, been the the linchpin of Kev's T and T's attack. Uh, I like D- Darnell Mooney as well. I think he's a good play. Um, but at the end of the day, you're right. There is not enough studs in this lineup. It's a lot of um, patches and uh, band aids on gunshot wounds, man. I got the gaff attack getting this one. Uh, 135 to KFTNT 115. And moving on to our next matchup, we go into a matchup of two, three, and four teams. Hey, somebody got to win this one, man. We got only for the boss taking on the United play as the Destroyers. All right, man, both teams are three and four. Both teams, I felt like, had a lot of promise coming into this season. But hey, as time uh, goes along, things start to unravel, man. What do you think of this from the UP and only for the boss? Yeah, I would say if, if you ask both of these, these owners, they would not be happy with where they are. Right. Um, uh, sitting three and four. Um, I, I think that, you know, this one's projected pretty close, but I, I don't know, man. I, I'm not digging the, the lineup for only for the boss this year. Okay. Again, it, 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 it's been really spotty. I mean, this is this is uh, Big Chief, right? And, right? and Patrick Mahomes sitting, sitting where he's at. Um, Travis Kelsey too I mean these guys are locks he's not going to make the decision to move these guys out yeah. um, and and again he's got the D in the coach and it just hasn't been as prolific as it has been in years past a lot of injuries happening I mean Kyron Williams showed you the flash but Nick Chubb and Cleveland I mean there's a major ceiling on that yeah. um, with, with, with Watson going down and that, that team just has a long way to go there's just not the depth that he really needs at this point in time. Yeah. When I look at what the UP's got, I mean, I think, you know, uh, Kirk Cousins been getting more starts than I think he should have been getting throughout the season. This right. is actually one that I think this Atlanta-Tampa Bay game has big scoring potential, I believe. Okay. Um, Derrick Henry's on a whole other plane right now. Um, you know, De- DeAndre against uh, Washington, I-, I like that matchup. And I'll say, like, guys, Hunter Henry and Jaden Jaden Reed, I mean, yeah. the- he's been sneaky, sneaky uh, to good. get in that top yeah. five. I don't like necessarily uh, the Colts' defense. Um, CJ has traditionally balled out against the Colts. I think he can find a better play. And the commander's coach without Jaden Daniels is a major risk, Big risk yeah. uh, against Chicago. Um, even with that, um, I've got the UP winning this one. I think he makes a coaching change. I I think that he has more guys that, that can go here. Um, but again, there's not really going to be fireworks, I don't think, for really anybody. I've got the UP winning a close contest, uh, 112 to only for the bosses, 108. All right, man. Um, I think I'm going to go the other way. Um, I like I like the Chiefs matchup this week. I think the Raiders are, are, are probably a matchup where they're going to actually try to open up the offense and get some points on the board. 
just to embarrass the Raiders because the Raiders were the last team that beat them. So I think that they are going to definitely have this game earmarked. Love Kyron Williams getting into the action tomorrow. And and Nick Chubb looked great in his first action back after that horrific injury. So uh, hats off to Nick Chubb for uh, getting back out there, getting in the end zone, and getting back uh, to doing the thing that he loves. And I think he's going to be a beneficiary. Uh, only for the boss is going to be a beneficiary of that. Love that Chiefs defense. And I like the Tyler Lockett play with no DK Metcalf um, this week. Now, on the United player side, we talked about it. Kirk Cousins. It doesn't matter how good or bad the matchup looks. He's completely unreliable and unpredictable. We don't know what we're going to get from him. And, I mean, he might have a huge week, but he might also have a five-point week. You never know. Derrick Henry is where this bread is buttered. We know this. This has been the UP's identity for the majority of, you know, time. Uh, Derrick Henry's going to uh, punch that ball in. He's going to run and break ADR runs. And he gives DeAndre Swift back into that line of a big thing. Now, George Pickens, look way better with Russell Wilson in the lineup than he ever did with Justin Fields. I think that that's a great play. And T. Higgins uh, was a great trade uh, for the UP. They're really strong at their receiver spots, but at the end of the day, I think only for the boss finds a way to sneak by. I think the Eagles definitely find a way to get Devonta Smith involved this week. And Debo Samuel finally got out of the hospital. Um, and hopefully he got his chunky soup and he ready to go against Dallas. I got only for the boss sneaking by in this one. 99 to the United players, 96. And moving on to our prestige matchup of the week. Big one here to close interconference warfare. A potential playoff for Pantheon Cup preview. We've got squad underestimated taking on appease the gods. All right, man, big one here. ATG squad underestimated. ATG coming into this one looking awesome. Lamar Jackson looking like the MVP of the league once again. Of course, uh, Tyreek gets Tua back. Saquon Barkley has looked awesome. And Brock Bowers is emerging. This is a big one, man. What do you think of this one? Squad underestimated ATG. Yeah, I mean, this one This one uh, certainly looks to deliver. I mean, both of these teams are coming in and, and they're ready to go. Uh, the, one, the one concern is the lingering in, injuries uh, for squad. Okay. I mean, when we, when we, when we look at what... what uh, with. Mm -hmm. um, again, McCaffrey and Puka not in the lineup, but again, uh, you, you mentioned it. Tyreek Hill getting getting his quarterback back. Um, I like CJ's matchup against Indy. Again, mentioned yeah. it earlier. He's, he's traditionally played really well. Uh, Saquon, I don't think there's any stopping him. The big X factor for me this week on this lineup is Alvin Kamara. Um, if you're looking at the injury report, Bad he's hand. playing with a broken hand yeah. and broken ribs right now. Wow. Um, this is just one of those the, those things that he, he might um, be one of those those people that, that squad has to be hesitant starting. It's just one of those ones where a guy plays a series or two and it's like, mm, we don't want to bang up our guy anymore. Right. Um, when, when, when I look at... Uh, down the lineup, I mean, again, Brock Bauer should 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 play well. The one X factor on that that I'll say is he's playing uh, Steve Spagnola, who I think is going to be dialing it up. And, and again, if they're going to go, they're going to have to go quick to Brock Bauer's. But yeah. I think that they're going to find a way to really disrupt that. Um, and again, I like uh, I like the D and uh, the coach picks here. I mean, he he should be solid. When I look at ATG, though, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Lamar Jackson is playing like he's 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 going for uh, the MVP. What I really liked last week was Bijan Robinson really uh, came to life. Sure did. Um, he 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 really helped up. He's the gods get get that win. Uh, and David Montgomery, man, just showing heart. He got banged up pretty early in that matchup and ended up still returning. Right. Uh, Ter Terry McLaurin, ever since him and Jaden Daniels really started to get it together, um, has been a whole other guy. Did well when Marcus Mariota came in, but I don't know. Uh, that to How's me that is the X factor yeah. on this side. Uh, ATG uh, has a few other options. I wouldn't be surprised if he if he shakes things up. DJ Moore's back in the lineup with the Bears coming back off the bye. Yeah. And I uh, and a piece of the gods went out and got Kate Dot Kate Dot in that tight end. Uh, probably figuring. I mean, he's been watching a lot of Baker Mayfield play, right. having him on his bench, and knowing that um, Godwin and Evans are out. I think he's looking to capitalize on that. 
uh, Brian Robinson Jr., Broncos D should have a field day again against Carolina. And I mean, you hit on it, Gino. The Bills might 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 um, have a have an easier day in Seattle than than uh, we may have uh, or that I may have thought. I think that um, the good times keep rolling for a piece of the gods. I think that uh, he wins a close one with squad uh, going one thirty seven to squads one thirty one. All right, man. Um... It's a tough one. This is this is probably the toughest matchup of the week uh, to pick. But uh, I mean, just for entertainment's sake, man, I'm gonna go the other way. I I actually like the fact that I think it's a big deal that Tua's coming back for Tyreek. I think that turns Tyreek Hill back into a a guy that you can shoot in for a potential 20 point performance. Once he was out of the lineup, you knew Tyreek Hill was going to be a guy that you'd be lucky to get 10 out of. So I think that really shoots up squad underestimated scoring potential. Kareem Hunt, man, I, I talked to it in the Only for the Boss uh, preview. I really, really like Kansas City this week. I think they're going to go out there and try to uh, make a lot of big uh, plays. And uh, I think they want to try to bury the Raiders in Las Vegas. Um, and I think Kareem Hunt, who got two touchdowns in San Francisco, is going to have himself another fine day. Baltimore's defense, they're going to get some turnovers with Jameis in there, but they're going to give up points as well. It's going, to, what's going That's going to come down to is can they get a, a pick six or a big play like that. Um, not so sure about that Steelers coach. I think New York is actually ripe to probably upset the Steelers on that Monday night, but hey, who knows? Um, CJ Stroud, like you said, I like the matchup, and Stephon Diggs can benefit from that. It's hard to really pick against ATG right now, though, man. Lamar Jackson is looking like by far the best quarterback in the game. It's not really even close. Um, consistently getting it done with his arm and his legs. I like that Buffalo coach. But I'm a little worried about Terry McLaren. And I do think that Washington has actually come together a little bit better on defense the last couple of weeks. And I think that they could give Caleb a couple of issues. At the end of the day, Bijan's going to need a big game. Um, I think for ATG to win, I say that maybe the, a couple of those rushing touchdowns turn into passing touchdowns instead, and squad underestimated squeaks by. I got squad getting this one, 136 to ATG's 133. All righty, PPLers, thanks for another great week of PPL Live. I hope you guys enjoy. We are in the home stretch. Hope you guys are enjoying the year. Keep tuning in, keep liking, keep commenting. Have a good week. Uh, may the odds be ever in your favor. Be safe.